Also, please fill out one of the surveys on the back table. Your comments are really helpful. For, um, the bread was homemade. Um, it's 100% whole wheat. Um, I put some uh, just like dried herbs in there. I don't know if you can taste it or not, but the butter is real butter. And if you need anything, if you need more water, you can just you know, give me a wave and I'll refill you while Carmen's looking. This is only half an hour workshop, so um, we didn't make coffee or anything for it. Um, we will also hand out our, the free bottle of bug spray at the end. Um, please remind me if I forget. <laughs> um, what else? I think that's about it. So without further ado, I'm really excited to have Carmen back. Um, some of you guys have been here for her uh, natural spring cleaning workshop in April, I think, which was fabulous. And I really like that this has become a series of making your own home products because it's cheaper. It's a lot healthier for our bodies not be putting toxins on, and it's better for our water supply and the environment too. So thanks, Carmen, for being here. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to uh, welcome everybody for coming to the Chicago County Rural Ministry uh, Nutrition and Gleaning Project, which I'm so happy to participate in again. The reason why I wanted to do the Natural Summer Gardens Workshop with Sarah here is because summertime is a very tricky time of the year where people have environmental allergies, where there are a lot of incidents of bee stings, insects biting, um, sunburn, because we're exposed more to the environment. We're outside, people are working in their gardens, um, people are working on commercial farms, and people just want to enjoy the nice warm weather. So I wanted to do a workshop that would incorporate some of the things we talked about in the past with uh, making your own home remedies uh, from the natural spring cleaning and working with, for example, vinegar, which is something we all have in our pantry, working with water, working with natural oils and herbs, working with products that don't contain chemicals that are harmful to ourselves, our animals, and the environment. And one thing I really wanted to do was um, start with the natural bug spray. I started uh, last year working on a horse farm with a friend of mine, and I made a uh, natural uh, fly spray for the horses because I see they use these commercial chemicals that have organophosphates. You can see that on the last page of the first pamphlet that discusses the toxicity of organophosphates, which are found in Roundup, uh, weed killers, insects killers, and off. And just in brief, organophosphates are chemicals cause nerve damage in the uh, intended pests. And there have been studies in Spain and other studies by scientists that have proven that that neurological damage can occur in us. And that's a no-no. But we don't want to do anything purposefully to endanger the environment, one another, our pets, our children, grandchildren, etc. So that's why I figured out a way to do some research on some natural pest control, natural weed killers, um, natural insect killers, and uh, there's information, websites that you can go to on your own. You can go to the Dark Free Library, the Darwin Parker Library of Fredonia, the other libraries throughout these smaller towns, Gulf Oak has a library, the SUNY Fredonia has a library, and you can do it on your, on your own time on, on your own computer, whether you're PC or Mac. Um, one of the most important things to remember is that when you're doing research or if you're learning something from someone else about natural products, whether they're natural pesticides, natural herbicides, natural insect killers, to really read the recipes, the instructions, and um, of course it's okay to experiment, uh, but make sure you understand why you're doing what you're doing and uh, know that some people have allergies to it, for example, orange oil, it, uh, orange oil is uh, not very palatable by cats, and I'm not sure about dogs. So when you use these uh, natural sprays, make sure you label them and place them in an area where the kids can't get to them or animals, or older adults that, that are forgetful and uh, don't remember things. Okay, so one of the things we're going to do now is if you look in your wonderful pamphlet that Sarah was so kind to put together for us because I did a lot of research and I had so much information and I was trying to get uh, a lot of things 
put together so that everybody has a wide variety of things to look at. Um, one of the things that I liked was discussing again about working with things that you have in the pantry. Vinegar has a million and one uses, right? Whether it's white vinegar or apple cider vinegar. Uh, the white vinegar is great for killing weeds. Now, when you look at the third page, they talk about a list of a few edible weeds. You want to make sure you don't want to kill the weeds that are good. And we did that way back when in one of the workshops here um, regarding edible weeds, dandelion, um, oh, what's the one? Purslane, the one that starts with P. Purslane is great for um, people whose teeth are falling out. And I can't remember the name of that condition. But um, purslane is also one of the green and you can make salads with it. Okay, so in this section says spray weeds out. And I got this from my wonderful book, Dead Daisies Make Me Crazy. And this is garden solutions without chemical pollution. And there's a lot of wonderful information in Sarah's kind of copy the book. Um, just like other plants, weeds cannot tolerate certain chemicals, including alcohol, vinegar, and soap. Now, alcohol is something we all have in the medicine cabinet or first aid kit. Um, let's see what else. We have vinegar, again, which is in our pantry, and we have that in our cupboards. And we have soap. So using this knowledge to mix up a batch of cheap and easy weed killer, these sprays are similar to those we use to control pests and diseases, only much stronger. And the nice thing about these natural components is um, you're not going to kill yourself if some of it drops on your arm or if you ingest it under normal conditions. Um, and there, there are different things you can do. You can put boiling water on seed as weeds. Or you can uh, use the soap spray. There's all different kinds. There's an alcohol spray, a weed spray, soap spray, which you can look at on your own leisure. I figured I'd do the vinegar spray to piggyback on the vinegar that we keep using throughout our courses. Okay, so for the vinegar spray, you get a spray bottle, okay, according to however size is feasible and comfortable for you. And you do equal parts of water to vinegar. And that's it. And you go in your garden. And if you've done the research beforehand, you know which weeds are good and which ones aren't. And you spray them. Okay, so this is wonderful because we use recycled items that we have in our home. This is a ricotta cheese container. This is Mexico house coffee, I can tell because it's blue. Pyrex. I can't do without my Pyrex measuring cups. And here's some white vinegar. Okay, so equal parts is one to one. So I've got one cup, and I'll measure up to the measuring line. Carmen, can I share a fun fact that I read about conventional weed killers? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm reading a book that um, just tells a little bit about why our, our the chemicals that we're allowed to use in our products are so much worse than other parts of the world. Um, in Europe, um, if a company wants to use a new product, a new chemical that hasn't been tested, they, are, they have to do their own testing. In the U.S., companies are not required to do any testing on a new chemical, and it's like innocent until proven guilty. So, a lot of times with these chemicals, it takes decades for the long-term effects to show. So, and then by that time, it's our health and the environment that's suffering rather than the companies having to pay for the testing. Um, one example is atrazine, which is one of the most common, it's a very common um, water pollutant in our country. I think the number the book gave was like 75 million pounds of atrazine is what we all use for weed killers. Um, and it's banned in Europe because it's, you know, there are definitely tested health effects that they found after their own testing of that product. So um, thank you, Carmen, for teaching us a different way to sell our weeds. <laughs> Was that a piggyback onto the email that you sent me? One of those that you yeah. sent me? Yeah. Yeah, I, um, I get really scared for everyone because it's so easy for everybody to say, oh, get me the off, or get me the Avon Skin So Soft Buzz. I'm more aware.